Every comedian was talking about, you know, what, who's this guy coming? Why is everyone coming to see him? And you never start off with a new joke, which is the biggest mistake of my life. So I got up and all these people drove an hour to get into the city and I got up and I told this joke and it just sat there. And I said, well, thank you, good night. And I walked off the stage and um, it was probably a, a really horrifying moment for my parents where yeah. I think if they had convinced themselves that I was doing something good out there, this is really <laughs> solidified that I maybe better figure out what the plan is. So. <laughs> So, but you, uh, obviously you had some conviction that you had a talent yeah. for this. Well, I really didn't bother a lot to expand up. Yeah. I mean, I knew, you know, it's a very difficult profession to make a living in, even if you're good. I knew that was a skill I had. I knew how to tell a joke. I knew I had, I had a, somewhat of a stage presence. So, um, but it wasn't, it wasn't really what I wanted to focus on. So, mm -hmm. Well, when you got deeply into Entourage, I don't know what you thought initially, but did you think, well, I'm the executive producer and, you know, I'll, Supervise the show, but we'll have people writing episodes. And you've wound up writing yeah. a pretty staggering number of these episodes yeah. and basically rewriting all of them. Right? I mean, it's been my dream since year one. Larry Charles was on the show year one, and he right. told me that the first couple of years you have you have to do it. Any great show is going to be the voice of a singular voice, basically. Yeah. And uh, so I always had this dream that year three, year four, year five, and Larry always told me that there were these Harvard guys that come in and they get the yeah. formula. Once you have the formula, they get it, they know how to translate it, and they do it for you, and you're like the happiest guy in the world. So that is yet to happen. <laughs> and I've had a couple of Harvard guys, including the, uh, the, the boss I had to hire was a Harvard guy. So at the end of the day, um, it's a very difficult thing to find someone, especially the, this show is so close to me and how I speak and how... Um, the people around me have spoken, so it's difficult to find those people, you know. Mm -hmm. And what about the stories? I mean, do you do you kick around stories? Yeah, we kick around stories. We have like five, six of us that sit in a room and, and talk stories all day. That's really the, you know, as anyone who knows on TV, is the most difficult part to try to find. And, and we didn't even know. I mean, HBO didn't want this to be serialized when it started. And it just kind of went that way. Yeah. At the end of that, when we had that Colin Farrell, Matterhorn moment, it was like, okay, well, now we got to figure out what's next. So, But initially it was going to be more like Larry Sanders, which was to be a standalone show. But you, you almost have like a theme for each season. Yeah. Right? yeah. Kind of where they're going. Possibly, and yeah. Yeah. And I don't I, like to think that much about it. It's just to freak <laughs> out because there was definitely, there's never been a plan for any type of theme until this year. There's a slight, there was yeah. a slight plan. But I mean, you know, the Medellin thing and the... the Medellin, yeah. you know, I mean, Medellin came out, you know, my wife and I were in Hawaii. I was reading a book about Pablo Escobar, and I just said, this would be a great movie for Vince, but that first came up in the first episode of the second season, before the whole Aquaman thing. Yeah. So never was there a plan that, okay, we're going to actually spend a year on this and where it right. happens. So um, it's it's been very kind of sporadic, off the cuff, and, and go with what we think is working and hope and hope it does. I think it's interesting that they're comparing Medellin to this movie. <laughs> Change the change. <laughs> I didn't hear that. I didn't hear yeah, that because it's long and right. you know, and <laughs> that's hysterical. I didn't hear that. Bad issue. You know, that. that's very People funny. People are saying, well, they made Medellin. Right. That's, that's funny. funny. That's <laughs> funny. I mean, there is a, there is sort of sort of a uh, life imitating art. There's been a lot of happening. stuff. I mean, Aquaman, they made a series after us, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. I know Oliver Stone was quoted as saying he, was, he wanted to thank Ari Gold for bringing him the Pablo Escobar story. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, there's been some, some weird, weird things that have happened. Uh, how about the success of the show? Did that really surprise you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, had, uh, I've had my share of failures, so, um, you know, it's always surprising when you have success. But again, I, I really... I still don't look at it like that. I still just kind of, just mm -hmm. let's keep going. Like, this show will be a success to me when we hit our eighth season. That's when I'll go, okay, we really did something. We've done 54 episodes, which for a, you know, a network show is it's relatively it's small. It's two years. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. you know, I still, before I really consider us a success, we have a, a long way to go. So. Yeah, but if, I, if people ask you, uh, what is the show about, what do you say? Friendship, you know, I mean, that's that was ultimately the, at the core of it and what attracted me to it and what was able for me to write it. These guys at the end of the day always have each other's back, which um, in any world is hard to find when you start hitting your 30s. You start to lose those close connections, and especially in Hollywood. It's very hard to maintain relationships like that. Everything's so cutthroat and competitive. So. You know, there was a period of time where people, everybody was trying to do a male sex in the city, mm -hmm. right? And, and no one would get the guy thing right. They would just wouldn't get it right. But this show, instantly, yeah. young guys started saying, no, they, they get this right. right. And, and I'm, I'm just how do you how do you do that? Well, I mean, you know, that's the gratifying thing about it. But I think, uh, you know, the attempt was to to keep it as real as possible, to have people speak exactly how they speak, to not make it plot driven, to make it more charactery, and um, you know, just 
you know, I try to get these guys speaking like me and my friends have spoken our whole lives. So. And and you, your friends have some elements in the character, mm -hmm. the characters, right? Sure. And you kind yeah. of and do yeah. they recognize themselves. Oh, yeah, I mean, there's stories I take directly from high school situations that happen that they all know. And like, I can't believe you put that on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and one of my friend, one of my best friends, Paul, it was like he was like our turtle. I said that, and I said that in New York Newsday, and yeah. all his friends now like just around, get the beer, go get this. Go get that. So, <laughs> <laughs> You've ruined his life. I've ruined his. <laughs> well, we're gonna do questions from the audience.